Welcome to the second episode of my Pygame tutorial. Today I'll be covering uh, rendering an image, uh, key input, and collisions. So I'm going to get straight into rendering an image. So I've already got an image here that I'm going to use. Uh, this is my profile picture at, at the moment, and I'm just going to use this for a, as an example image. So first you want to actually load the image into a variable. I'm going to call this player image. So now, this is the uh, code you use to load an image. This is specifically the function you use, and then I'm just setting this variable to what that returns, which is of the Pygame Surface class, which is a class used for any image, kind of. It has other properties and stuff too. Like the screen is, is considered its own surface. So I'm going to render the image now, since we've got it loaded into the memory. Okay, so I've written some code for rendering the image. Um, it renders it onto the screen surface, which is what's being shown in the window. And then the blit function is used to put one surface onto another surface. I'm rendering it at 50-50. Well, 50x, 50y. And unlike how it works in math, the y axis is inverted. And um, the y value increases as you go down. The top left corner of a window is 0, 0, and the bottom right corner is, uh, in our case, is 400, 400, because that's the size of the window we have. So, if I did everything right, um, it should uh, show an image here. Yeah, and as you can see, there's you can see this image right here, which is the one um, I said I was using. And just to be clear, I have the image I'm using in the same directory as the um, script I'm running. The image name is player.png, so pretty simple. And if you want to have it in another folder, you can do it, like you can have an images folder and put it in there, and it's, they'll have it as player.png, and uh, .png is just the path to the image. So one more thing is that this is what's used to update the display. This, the screen, um, I'm actually not completely sure if it's considered a surface or not, but it's kind of treated white like one. Um, this function right here specifically updates the I believe, surface used for uh, what's being shown in the window. Actually, specifically what updates what's being shown in the window because a normal game loop, you would add an image at one point, and then maybe later during the same loop, um, you want to add another image. Like you don't want to have the person playing the game see them appearing like that, so. This makes it so that everything updates at once. So yeah, next thing I'm going to cover is key input. So there are these things called events, which is like um, different events for your keyboard, mouse, and a couple other things. Um, and th there's different event types, and uh, we used quit earlier for the X button on the window. Uh, this one, the key down one, is for a bunch of keys on your keyboard. This uh, code right here will be triggered any time a um, key on your a keyboard is pressed down. Not when it's held down, but when it's initially pressed down. So, since that's any key, we have to narrow down which key uh, we're handling here. So, if the event.key is k right, which is the right arrow key, we can choose some code to run here for that. So I'm going to create some variables for movement. And then now I'm going to finish the um, code for the uh, handling events. Okay, so now I've written some basic code for this. The key up um, event type is for when the key comes up. So if you want to have a variable that's used for knowing whether or not the key is currently down, you just gotta keep track of when it was pressed down and when it was released and control the variable accordingly. Um, so when, say, my right key is down, it'll set the moving right to true and then as soon as I lift it up, it'll set it to false. So we can use these variables um, to tell which keys are being held down. 
So now I'm going to add some coordinates to our player, which is just my avatar. Um, now I've added those coordinates, I'm going to uh, set the image to render at the, those coordinates. And then I'm going to make it so that um, it handles the movement from, well, the key presses from the keyboard to move the player. Actually, what, uh, I made a mistake here. Is this player location zero and player location zero? Because I need to change the x value within the player location. X, well, positive x is to the right and negative x is to the left. And yeah, there's going to be an important mistake here that I'm going to cover in a moment. Yeah, you can see it leaves this kind of like trail from where I go. This is because I'm constantly adding the image to the screen surface, I guess, um, and, and never actually clearing it. So it's just stacking up different copies of the image all over the screen uh, surface. So what we have to do here is just completely fill it. Um, I'm going to fill the screen with another color so that every frame it's completely reset and only shows what I've um, chosen to show on that frame. So the values right here um, are for the color you want to fill it with. The dot fill function is just for filling the surface with a solid color. Um, this color right here is kind of like a blue color. It's an RGB, so this is red, this is green, and this is blue. Um, each value goes to from, from 0 to 255. And then now we shouldn't have that trail. And then, yeah, you can see it doesn't leave a trail. It's good. So, now that we've done that, um, I'm going to do a couple more interesting things here. Um, this is will help get across the concept of how I normally handle gravity. So I'm going to have a player vertical momentum variable. I'm going to set that to zero. Um, actually, let's call that y momentum because it's shorter. And then I'm going to write some more code for this here. Okay, so I've written some interesting code here. What this does is it tests to see if the player location is more than the window size, um, y value, minus the um, image, um, the player image's height, which is basically the location of the bottom of the player image. And if the bottom of the player image is uh, uh, basically touching the bottom of the screen, this will trigger, and then it'll flip the momentum. It'll just reverse it so that if you're going down, it'll make you bounce it back up. So this is like a bouncing thing. And then otherwise, it'll add to the momentum so that um, you're always kind of following this kind of gravity. And then you can see here what this will do. Yeah, as you can see here, I'm kind of bouncing around. The final thing I would like to cover in this tutorial is collisions. So. Uh, the way the collisions work in Pygame is through objects called rects. They have an x attribute, a y attribute, um, a, w a height and width. So they're basically just rectangles. The x value is for the top, uh, well, is for the left side, and the y value is for the uh, top side. So um, the x and y value, much like the way images are shown, is for the top left corner of an image uh, well, of the rect. So I'm going to create a rect for the player. Okay, so I just created a rect for the player. Its x position is the player's x position, and then the y position is the same as the player's, and then it uses the height and width of uh, the... Uh, player image as the, uh, the height and width of the uh, rect. 
And this is just a rectangle that's just kind of there. You can't see it. You can make it, you can make it so that it's shown, which I'm going to get to in a moment. But it's mostly just for collisions right now. So, one problem here though, is that the rect is not updating. It'll just stay at the player's starting position. One way you could do this, which I would rather not do right now, is to just fully redefine it. Another way you can do it is by setting the, with the x value and y value to the player position. So now we have the uh, rect updating to the player's position. I'm going to create one another rect for the player to collide with so we can test collisions. So I created the rect for the player to collide with. Um, it's going to be at 100x, 100y. It's going to be 100 pixels wide um, and 50 tall. So now we've got to see if the player is colliding with it. So if player rect dot collide rect, um, and then test rect, uh, this if statement um, uses a function for rects to see if it's touching another rect. And since this rect is always where the image of the player is being shown, it'll uh, just uh, basically show if the player image is touching the um, test rect, even though that's not actually what's happening, it's just always at the same position. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show the test rect. You show it onto the surface you, of your choice, so I'm going to choose the screen, and then you choose the color, so I'm going to choose, um, let's go bright red, and then you have to list the rect you want to show. This function draws a rect onto a surface with a given color. And then if it's not touching, because remember, this is the line for checking if the player is touching it, I want to show that rect in black. And now it's shown in black if uh, the player is not touching it. Okay, so I actually made a mistake here. When defining a rect, you have to use a capital R and not a lowercase r. Um, that'll cause some confusion with the play game. However, in the draw function, it does use the lowercase r, so take note of that. And now, you can see here the direct um, is drawn over the player, because you can see here in the loop, it's um, shown with these two lines, either one or the other, after the player. And you can also see that it turns red, like in the code down here, when the player is touching it. I can go like this way, too, and avoid touching it. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, part. Uh, I covered image, rendering images, key input, and collisions. I hope you'll come and see the next part where I cover um, an introduction to platformers and platformer physics, which is where I'll finally start working on the game I'll hope to finish for this tutorial.